What's cracking? Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Buy for all the good and bad inside the world of Apple. Now, right now, I'm somewhere laying down and oiled up on a tropical island, but we aren't going to leave the Apple Biters like you without a show. Plus, we also have a killer giveaway we're sticking around for. So, we're making this a short but sweet email show where we take your questions and also read some of your more interesting ones. Now, Andrew Walker writes in and says, is now a good time to buy the MacBook Air because of all the rumors of a 15-inch? Will the existing models get a spec bump? Now, Andrew, if you're looking for a 15-inch laptop, I would just wait to see if the rumored 15 Air is something you really want. It's not for everyone. Laptops will last you a lot longer, and you don't have to upgrade them every year. So if you're in the market for one, my advice is to wait for the exact model that you want. And for sure, we'll probably see spec bumps as well. Now, Elena James writes in with, I just got an iPhone and I'm annoyed by having to jump into my settings all the time. Is there an easier way to do this like Android does? Now, Elena, I'm happy to tell you there is, and this is probably one of my new favorite things. A UI and visual designer named Jeff Broderick created the links and polished icons that will get you quick access to your specific settings. So all you have to do is just go to the webpage, brdrck.me slash settings, on your iOS device, and you'll see an arrangement of icons for the services we use the most. Now, once you select something like Bluetooth, all you have to do is either install the shortcut or just add that specific page to your home screen. If you add it as a home page screen, you'll have to launch it a few times before it works, but after that, voila, it will jump directly to your iOS settings and it'll look good doing it. I know, awesome. You guys can thanks me later. Now, Alex Breen writes in and says, can you make the full version of Foxy Lady? Alex, we're working on it. And we also received some awesome snail mail from you guys right here in this mailbox after I asked for it. Now, I'm gonna look inside, and our friend Tyler Gannon, he sent us this amazing card from his iPhone directly to us, who knew? And then Mario Argueta, he sent us this Steve Jobs button. So, thank you so much. You guys are so kind, except, uh, where did this half-eaten apple come from? Well, it's still good. All right, let's take a break with something we still constantly get asked all the time. How do I move iTunes to an external drive? Well, Mr. Donabell has the answer to that. Is your iTunes media library hogging up too much space on your computer? I'm Donald Bell, and I'm here to show you how to run your iTunes library from an external hard drive. If you have a massive iTunes library filled with music, movies, and podcasts, it's not a bad idea to offload that content onto a separate external or internal hard drive. But transferring that library isn't as obvious as dragging and dropping your iTunes folder onto a new drive. It's not hard, but to do it right, you've got to let iTunes do the work for you. To get started, open iTunes and make sure the drive you want to move your library to is connected to your computer and ready to go. Next, go into your iTunes preferences. On a PC, you'll find this under the Edit menu, and for a Mac, it's under the iTunes menu. Click under the Advanced tab and where it says iTunes Music Folder Location, change the location to a folder on your external hard drive. Next, make sure the Copy Files to Music Folder option is checked. This ensures that any new content you download or rip into iTunes gets transferred to the new location. After that, hit the OK button. Now, you're not done yet. There's one more big step to take before iTunes really starts moving your library to the new location. But before we commit your computer to what could be a few hours of transfer time, let's take a moment to do some general iTunes housekeeping. Delete any old podcasts you're not listening to, or maybe some movies or TV shows you never plan on watching again. There's probably a lot of clutter in your library that you don't need to waste time copying. A couple of minutes here could save you hours of transfer time. When you're ready to make the transfer, click the iTunes file menu, then go to Library and select Organize Library. You'll see a window with options here for consolidating and organizing your library. Check them both if you can, but the critical one here is the first option for consolidating files. This is going to take all the files referenced by iTunes on your computer, your movies, your music, your audiobooks, podcasts, TV shows, and it's going to copy it over to the new location on your external drive. It will take some time, and remember, it's not deleting the old files, it's just copying them to the new location. If you're feeling confident, later on you can move your old iTunes media files on your local drive to the trash can after the transfer is complete. Then check again to make sure everything is still working, and then permanently delete the old files. Watch out for deleting your local iTunes ITL or XML files, though, as these might still be used for your playlists and ratings. Once the dust has settled and all your precious iTunes content is running smoothly from the external drive, 
you can finally pat yourself on the back. Unless the drive is powered off or disconnected, iTunes will remember to load your music library from the external drive every time it launches. Without the drive connected, iTunes will temporarily revert back to the internal drive and function for things like streaming podcasts or internet radio or downloading stuff from the iTunes store, but you won't be able to play your library content without connecting back up to the external drive. For CNET.com, I'm Donald Bell, helping to give your iTunes library some extra breathing room. Thanks, Donald. Now, we also have tons of you still writing about this one. Lionel asks, the colorful case you use on your show, is it a case or a wrap for your phone? Lionel, it's a Jelliskin, and because I love them so much and you guys want them so much, our friends at Jelliskins have hooked up the Apple Byte with 10 free codes worth $25 that you can use on their site. Now, it could be a Jelliskin for your phone, a laptop, your video game console, or an e-reader, or an iPad like mine, but it looks great, and it showcases some amazing independent artists. So all you guys have to do is watch last week's episode, tell me all of the uh, food items that were piled onto me, We'll randomly pick the winners and announce them next week. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. Send us your emails to theapplebyte at cnet.com. I'm Brian Tong. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week for another Bite of the Apple.